Hello, Smackheads, and welcome back to uh, Smug Mode, the uh, spin off of the Square Eyes Syndrome uh, Red Dwarf podcast. Um, I'm Ben Gilman, and as always, surrounded by Smackhead number one, Tom Hill. Hello. And Dwayne Dibley, number two, Troy What's Salmon. Up? What's up? What's up? And today we're here to talk about episode number two of series one, Future Echoes. Um, so how do you guys feel about this one? Go on, Tom, I'll let you go first. <laughs> I think for me and for a lot of people, it's probably regarded as one of the best episodes of this series, if not the best of series mm. one. So it's a tight episode. It's an interesting episode. Um, yeah, it's one of my absolute favourites. Yeah, I, I, watched... I like, the, I like the, the time travel. The time travel stuff is... I've always been into that ever since some of that movies back in the day as a kid. I was intrigued by the theory of relativity and all that stuff, like Einstein theory. I've always been into that. Well, may, maybe, Ben, we should, you should give a quick overview of what the episode's about. I was just about to do that. <laughs> um, so it's basically, it basically starts off with um, Dave Lister um, is uh, decided, hey, it's a long way back to Earth, so he's about to go back into stasis uh, for the rest of the journey with Cap. Um, which annoys um, which annoys Rimmer quite a lot. But in the preparation for it, the ship is jolted very severely. Uh, and Holly says, which who's the ship computers, remember, um, that the constant speed of the ship has caused it to break the light barrier. And that's because of it, and because of this, um, future echoes start to happen of stuff that is yet to happen. And the whole episode, they get further and further. Um, and they're beginning to see things that are happening in the future, including the very, one of my favorite scenes so far is the Rimmer Lister conversation in the drive room. Um, yeah. <laughs> if, um, we see the Rimmer side of it first with Lister coming in, and then um, Lister goes to follow him out the door, and then Rimmer comes in and Lister repeats it adverbially. It's. Um, <laughs> Do you know what the really weird thing about it's that scene is? Crazy. Do, you know, do you know what the really weird thing about that scene is? Wow. That actually <clears throat> Lister and uh, Craig Charles and Chris Barry are in the room together for the Rimmer stuff. So when Lister's saying one thing and Rimmer's saying the other. Yeah. And then uh, Chris Barry wasn't in the room and Craig Charles had to do all the stuff for the genuine conversation that you think looks like the genuine conversation on his own. So actually the one where they're talking complete opposites <laughs> is the one where the two of them were in the same room. We're actually recording together. So it's just it's really odd that they did it that way around, but it worked beautifully. But yeah, apparently Craig Charles had real trouble because he had to try and remember where Chris Barry had been standing and all these things at different points. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nah. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> um, but the main point of the episode is um, Rimmer says that he sees Lister um, in the future echo of Lister dying in the drive room yep. while working on the Expo Navicom. Um, obviously, um, he takes far too much pleasure in that. But Kat, um, obviously, and this is one of my favorite bit, um, I've just noticed for the first time after 32 years of watching this show regularly. Um, because uh, Craig Charles is from Liverpool, so so by association is Lister. Um, didn't catch Kenny and Mac uh, McCarthy and Lennon are the name of the robotic fish that cat eats into. Um, You've only just realised that. You just realised that. <laughs> well, sometimes you just watch stuff again and you, it clicks. That made me smile. My wife even yeah. knows. She, she knows Liverpool and she's like, ah, oh, Beatles is kind of clever. Um, obviously, cat. She he tries to stop cat breaking his tooth, but accidentally. Knocks his tooth out by knocking him into something. I think it was the shark tank, the uh, fish tank. Yeah, yeah. He, was uh, he was catching him from eating the electronic. Yeah, his favorite fish. Yeah, yeah. Um, but he keeps trying to run away from it, but he's not going to be able to. Um, but then we find our um, elderly Lister. Um, I just love. Yeah, so there, there's a scene. So basically, Rimmer says that he saw Lister get blown up when he was messing about with the, the comms. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. And then and then Holly says to Dave, listen, like five minutes later, there's a problem with there's an overload in the comms. I need you to fix it. Yeah. So Lister goes, okay, fine, and goes to do it, and then doesn't die. Yeah. And they're Cuts. walking back from that with Rimmer going, it's going to happen tomorrow because he's taking far too much pleasure in the idea of Lister <laughs> and blowing the really... smithereens. But Rimmer Riz, 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 Riz just smiling the entire time while it was happening. <laughs> I love the little in... death march he does at one point. <laughs> it's just brilliant. Dun, dun, um, dun. Rimmer finds out the, um, the the picture of two babies. Then we find out that, oh, and this is um, for people that don't watch Red Dwarf who are watching it with us. Eventually, the babies will come back in. It's uh, basically yeah. setting up the very future. It's, this is so- it's, the, it's setting up the very end of season two. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, because there's a great line of how do we get two babies on board? I don't know, but it'll be a lot of fun. <laughs> and we find and they that. do come back to that. <laughs> yeah, they definitely do. Also, Talky Toaster. This is the first time that little annoying bastards here fly yes. through the moon. <laughs> I, I, love, I love the bit where Future Lister is just like talking to him, like the older version, who's dreadlocks and everything, just talking to, to Rim. Rim is like, "What happens to me?" Come here. So come, come, come closer. Come, come closer. <laughs> and disappears. You go, oh, you go. I'm surrounded by goins. <laughs> um, uh, I do love the haircut as well. Let's talk about. Um... Oh God, yeah. Oh, yes. Rimmer insults Holly right at the beginning of the episode. <laughs> And ask for a, what is it? He asks for an incredibly short haircut, and he gets basically given a beehive, doesn't he? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, love that. I love it, and it's like um, as my father always said: shiny, clean boots, and a spanky short haircut. You can cope with anything. Um, Just before that rather unfortunate suicide business. Yeah, that's quite fucking dark, isn't it? Um, <laughs> it is dark. I still that was like dark, it. isn't <laughs> And it's just like um, he just looks in the mirror and just goes. Ah, um, he makes me feel like a man. Yeah, <laughs> I love how he can't feel it because he can't feel the hair on his head. <laughs> I love the um, Molly, uh, Holly. He leaves to leave. He goes to talk to Holly, and there's a message. He goes, "This is a recording. I'm afraid Holly's busy at the moment. But if you would like to leave a message after the beep, <laughs> he'll get back to you." Bleep. <laughs> it's the pause where he obviously hasn't thought about doing a beep, and it goes beep. <laughs> I do, especially talking of Holly, because of the introductions. These aren't things that we hang over, but the first two seasons, uh, Holly does introductions, and he always has a funny bit at the end. This time it's I am Holly, the ship's computer with IQ 6000, the same as same IQ as 6000 PE teachers. I thought that was a good first <laughs> one. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, a, that's a really good one, right? 6000 PE teachers. Well, I mean, I remember my PE teacher was quite a nice guy. I don't know if he had a brain in between his ears, but Pretty decent. But anyway, back to my school life. Um, uh, the cat got a bit sidelined here for me. And um, um, I'm going to up now. This is the second week of the mirror joke. And he does it a bit more next week as well. It's yeah. a bit annoying so far. The cat has he's still found his spot yet. Yeah. Um, he does get a bit sidelined, but he still has one of my favourite moments in the episode when they're going into stasis. And him listening, he bring, he's walking along with that clothes rack. Oh, yes. Uh, and um, uh, Lister says, I told you to bring a few essentials, things you couldn't live without. He says, These are my yeah. bare essentials. Just these yeah, are the it's a whole coat rack. It's a whole clothes rack of suits. Literally about 30 uh, suits. <laughs> they all get wear, worn at various points during the next couple of seasons. They do, yes. That's what I love. Like, how long term fans will know. The cat fashion show, we should totally have a joke. Like a RuPaul style <laughs> song. The cat like, fashion yeah. show. <laughs> Danny, John, Danny John Jules won this. Um, also, I forgot the fact he tried to start because they're doing the. Um, he's He is getting a lot more here. Also, I remember the bit where they're going for the photographs and he starts on the dog, but you can tell he's shitting himself. Yeah. But he wants to, he wants yeah. to fight that dog. <laughs> oh yeah, that was funny. That was funny. The dog, the dog scene. 
It's like, I'll I, 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 I beat that dog up, man. And then he's all scared. The dog he hits himself <laughs> in the wall. He runs off. He's, like, he's so scared. He's a scaredy cat. That's basically what he's tied to. <laughs> oh, God. Also, um, I remember, I love this bit where Rimmer goes, what are future echoes? And he goes, how simple do you want this? Oh, so Lister can understand it. And it's oh, just... Yeah. A- <laughs> oh, God. Oh, <laughs> God. Just, I mean, I know we're just, we're just like going to quote things, but this is the point of the podcast. It's just a <laughs> rain and the fish supper. Oh, wait, that's next week. Sorry. Fish supper? About- yeah, that, that's the week after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you dropped in the middle. Yeah. It's back to back, guys. Uh, we're sorry to break the fourth wall because then, like the syndrome, we are doing these back to back as much as possible. Um, so, Troy's a busy man. What can I say? It's his fault. Um, I'm joking. I'm not going to uh, <laughs> No, but um, I'm beginning to the scu- the scutters are also. Um, oh wait, that's next week as well. Not next week. Yep. <laughs> well, like, the scutters get some really good scenes. Next week. See, the future. See, see, the future echoes. It's getting to you, Ben. <laughs> yeah. Nice. <laughs> next week is pretty good as well, but we'll get into it. Um, but this is the bit where the point of Red, the first two seasons of Red Dwarf are Rimmer and Lister. Bickering yeah. like a married couple every week. The cat's there. And I don't He's there think... more as com- comic relief. Yeah. From the battling of those two. Crichton's not quite there yet to be the mum of the team. So, you know, it's still good though. Um, but yeah, the... very good. Oh, it's just brilliant. I just love how they wind each other up. I mean, Arnold Rimmer is so despicable, but so. Hilarious at the same time. I I know someone as a friend that used to be like him, actually. <laughs> oh, jeez. I think, I think everyone knows someone who's in that room at some point. Yeah, you and me, Troy. We've worked with a few people like that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Trust me. Mm-hmm. What, a tiny bit of power and it all goes to their head? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we've all done that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, everyone at some point does. I just, yeah, yeah. It's definitely, there's always one... Um, power mad person in any workplace I haven't met any of my me and Tom's place so far anyway. oh they're around <laughs> they're, they're so with mine they're around trust me oh yeah so the I, I also remember there's a great um, bit where like it's the London Jets and um, there goes oh yeah the zero gravity football team is it named Jim Bexley Speed oh yeah, yeah we found out what he's called the cap yeah obviously um and um the the the, the guy in the picture we've listed is just... is Jim oh, Bexley fuck. Speed who was the roof attack for yeah. the London Jets yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah it's uh because Jim and Bexley are the name of uh, future we find out the name of the future sons of um. Mr. Lister, yeah. I don't remember. Did we say that what list what Rimmer saw in the drive room was actually Bexley dying, not Rim, not Lister? Yeah, it's Bexley. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it's his. So it's his son, that question. Yeah. He goes, um, "How old did I look? How old are you now? Twenty five, mid twenties. Yeah, mid twenties. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all I could say, all I could see was his hat. He never saw his face. Yeah. Yeah. So obviously pass on to pass on his um his hat to his son at some point. Hmm. Or it could have been from his um from his mum, that hat. You got a point yeah. there. You got a point there. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You got a point there, you got a point yeah. there, Tommy. Got a point. We're, we're, we're ten episodes away from that, Tommy boy. I was trying to I was trying to put out theories out there, you know. I'm surprised they never brought those women back. It'd be brilliant if they did. Maybe a season fourteen thing to do. Oh, Maybe. they're still. <laughs> I've just shook them up. They're still alive. They are, yes. <laughs> oh, it'd be brilliant. Anyway, we're we're not talking. We're going into the future too much. So, yeah. what what do you think, Troy, about this episode? You know what? I'm a sci-fi nut. I love I love sci-fi elements to my shows. Time travel, check. Space, check. Ships, check. Complex storyline, <laughs> check. Ah, this had everything, man. Future echoes. Unfortunately, there's no witches, but besides that, it's your fault. <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> come on, bro. Hey, uh, hey, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a, I'm a, you know, say I'm an auteur, you know, say I, I like all, all sorts, you know, say I like, like the witchy, like the supernatural stuff, I like the sci fi, like the horror, I like, I like everything, trust me. But sci fi is a special place in my heart as well. So this this episode had everything in it, loved it. Love the little um theory of relativity, the Einstein stuff up in there, having a bit of fun with it as well, you know what I'm saying? The future echoes, go going back and forth through time, space travel, um, a bit of two thousand one space odyssey thing going in there as well. So loved it. Yeah. What about you, Tom? Well, like I said, this is in my mind probably the best episode of series one. It's just funny. And the there are two or three good episodes in series. But most of the other ones have moments that I remember so vividly of unloved. Mm. This episode, I remember all of it. Every single bit, even though there are moments that make me laugh more than others, the whole episode holds together. Whereas there are moments in other episodes in other episodes that make me enjoy it because they're great one off moments. One off, yeah. This is the mo for me, this is the most coherently funny episode. It hangs together. And it- uses science fact it actually uses things that are based in proper science it actually does yeah, yeah. it's not messy it's not like i think i said it last last time is uh best science fiction is based in science fact and yeah. they got that right with this they had because obviously nobody's traveled at the speed of light but the theory is that these things could happen so it's not actually just a ridiculous it's not just a stupid thing it's a potential theory that has actually been postulated so they're not just dicking about with it. They are actually using genuine thought of theory for it. But also the beauty of something like doing something at light speed is we're probably never going to know whether that would happen. So you do have a bit of license as well uh, to yes, do what you think. Mm. Loved it. The best. Yeah. <laughs> Such a good episode. Oh, wait, there was a vending machine with a lisp. Yeah, voiced by Tony Hawk's again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Every time you say Tony Hawk, I think it's the skateboard. I think it's the skateboard. Literally, the first thing that pops my head because I used to have the games, that's why. <laughs> I love the games. Look <sighs> at <laughs> <laughs> Tom's just like, sighing right now. Oh, God. Uh, also, it establishes something, which is a bit weird, um, because even if he's a hologram, and his hair grows because he gets a haircut. That's a bit weird. I think they were probably establishing that because the characters were going to get older at some point. They had to establish that things could change. <laughs> Possibly. Yeah. I think that was purely a practical thing. If they know that people are going to look slightly different after a few years, and if the show continued, they get, they'd have get, get to ready. Get ready. It. Yeah. <laughs> so it's sort of just covering their backs a bit, I think. Is this the episode? As well? No, no, no. It's the next episode. Where the, with the, yeah, um, you've just done me. You've done a future echoes to yourself there, mate. Right? Yeah, but I didn't actually say what I was thinking, so we're good. I can just... That, that's that's going to be a special phrase now. I'm going to go too far ahead. The future echoes. I could just retcon uh, that and claim that I wasn't going to... You just the... <laughs> oh, talking of retcon, um, I've got one for you here. Here's a bit of trivia. After the episode aired, Rob Grant and Doug Naylor became uncomfortable with how casually Lister takes the news of his future son's violent death. So... When the episode was adapted for the Infinity Welcome Careful Drivers, which is a book, it was altered so it's actually Lister's grandson who dies in a never come explosion. Oh, okay. There you go. I suppose, yeah, he is a little bit kind of not that bothered about the fact. I, I mean, I always took it as he's relieved that it's not him. Yeah. Rather than he doesn't care that it's his son. Is At that moment, it's his relief that takes over more than anything else, I think. Is the way I always saw it because Lister is a fundamentally good person. Yeah. He just like, yeah, yeah. It's, it's quite an underreaction. Yeah. Ah, Channel 20, Groovy Channel 27. Groovy, funky Channel 27. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I've Hold always remembered that for some reason. <laughs> oh. Also, Rema claims that Lister has a fondness for marijuana gin. Now, I can't even get my head around that. Marijuana <laughs> gin, oh my God. So you can get drunk and high at the same time, right? Nice. Nice. Yeah, I guess it's possible, I guess. <laughs> I, I, that never comes back. But Talkie Toaster, is um, uh, obviously, how do you feel about him as a side character? <laughs> um... Because he doesn't get many goes after this. I think he gets one more episode. 
He he's less, he's less annoying in Series 1 than he was when he comes back in Series 4. They don't even address it. Like, it's just a talking toaster. They don't even put emphasis on it. He gets one line. No, yeah. he gets one line. Light speed, then he sings Fly Me to the Moon. Because he goes to the Lista when he's shaving, you can't sing. <laughs> the thing is, I think the toaster in Series 1 has more of a personality than the toaster in when he comes back in Season 4. Because in Season 4, he's purely obsessed with bread products. Whereas he actually has a conversation with Lister in series one. It's one of my favourite conversations of dialogue in Red Dwarf history coming up. When we get there in a couple of months. <laughs> End of the year. Is that Talkie Toaster again? Talkie Toaster, yeah. Oh dear, oh dear. So how do we rank it so far? So it's a lot better than the first episode. Well, not um, a lot better. I would say, that, lot better. I would say that. Second part. episode. For a show this early... It's a very confident um, episode. They've obviously put this here because, one, it's their best episode and it also introduces to the audience the science fiction concepts of the show. Yeah. I mean, like, like I said last week, I wasn't, it wasn't the last one they filmed, but it was, I think it was the fourth episode they actually filmed. Yeah. Because, there was, because the first series, there was no kind of linear thing, really, about how long they'd been there. You could put the episodes in whatever order you wanted. You knew yeah. the time was passing, but there was nothing that suggested that suggested that one followed on from the other. If you know what I mean. So they yeah. were able to. The first episode had to be where it was because it was the setup, but all the others were probably interchangeable to a degree. And where, yeah, so... where they put them, if you know what I mean. Yeah. So yeah. when they when they, when they yeah. spoke, there was nothing nothing to suggesting like, oh, this happened in that episode. You did this. You did the, that. The only thing, the only thing that did that was the um, the introduction by Holly, which yeah. obviously was filmed later, so they could do that however they wanted. Yeah. I wonder what next week it is. I find out, but that's next week. That's just stop jumping ahead. Ne- ne- next week is Balance of Power. I think it's as good as episode two next week. There are some that just made me laugh. But there anyway, are some we- brilliant moments in Balance of Power. <laughs> but I've also got some serious issues with balance of power, so we will get to that when okay, we Okay, I'm interested. No. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. But we'll get to that. <laughs> yeah, so, Rob, uh, yeah, anyway, because next week Lister gives it to him really hard. <laughs> like proper bitchy lines. It's hilarious. Um, anyway, um, I think that's it for now. I think we've done this episode. Um, I think so. Thanks for joining us, and uh, we'll see you next week for episode three, Balance of Power. It's goodbye for me. Goodbye. Goodbye.